Adobe's first attempt at AI image generation came a little bit late compared to the competition. Just six months ago, they released the first iteration of Firefly, and as it was expected, it left a lot to be desired. It just couldn't compete against mid-journey. But now, six months after, they've come up with a second iteration of Firefly, promising better results in pretty much every category, including faces, a particular weakness of the first version. So that's the promise. Let's see now if that's actually true. In order for us to see how good Firefly 2 actually is, we're going to use the exact same prompts we used six months ago when testing out the first version. So let's go. This prompt was a little bit tricky for Firefly version 1 because it couldn't render objects or faces that well. The overall look of the image also had its own set of issues, with the main one being that all output looked like a stock image. Firefly also had problems applying some of the descriptors to the right object. For example, even though I asked for a green rug, Firefly added green everywhere in the image. This is not unheard of, other engines do that too, but in Midjourney's case, it does a better job containing the issue. Now, let's see if Firefly version 2 does any better. Here's the first set of images without me making any setting adjustments. It's quite obvious that things have improved a lot. People are much better rendered, and the anatomy feels much more precise. The rendering of objects and plants also feels a lot better. It's a better looking image overall. Firefly version 1 feels more like a student's collage project, while version 2 feels more like a refined product. There are still artifacts and issues, but they're not as pronounced. The images still have this stock image look, but I'm afraid there's not much we can do about that. It has to do with the type of images the AI was trained with. On the plus side, Firefly has a nice set of options. We can adjust pretty much every aspect of the image. For example, we can change the type of lighting, the angle of the composition, and we can even change the lens the image was shot with. And here's a second batch of images after adjusting the settings. The lighting is definitely more interesting. It looks like it was actually shot in a real setting and not a studio like in the first batch. But yeah, notice also the annoying smiles in all of the images. Because the majority of stock footage has people smiling, we just can't get rid of them. Even if I used negative prompting, I still got people with smiles. And here's another thing I've noticed, which I suspect is a bug, but I could consistently reproduce it. Once we start adjusting the image, things start falling apart, especially when it comes to faces. So here's how people look in the first batch when I didn't adjust anything, and here's how they look after one and two rounds of adjustments. Also notice that the rug now looks more like a beanbag. The way to get rid of these issues is to basically exit that prompting session completely and then start fresh with the same prompt. So yeah, Firefly version 2 is definitely better than version 1, but it's still way behind compared to Midjourney. Just as a reminder, the Midjourney images were done six months ago, so you can see how much of a head start Midjourney had. By the way, if you want to go through these images in more detail, you can download them on my newly created Patreon page. You'll find the link in the description below. Now let's move on to the next one. As I've mentioned already, Firefly version 1 had problems with rendering faces. It would create heads with uh, weird proportions, duplicate parts, and lots of other small issues that are immediately visible to a human eye. In the previous prompt, we got a glimpse of Firefly's new rendering abilities. But how about portrait shots? I'm happy to say that the results are night and day. This is the first batch I got back before I changed to widescreen. These look like actual real-world people. We have beautiful details, excellent atmospheric lighting, it's all top-notch. 
but there's no way for us to get rid of these stupid smiles. It's something we just have to get used to. I guess that's the nature of things with Firefly. In comparison, here's how Midjourney rendered things back then. Midjourney nails pretty much everything. We have beautiful cinematic lighting, and most importantly, this subject has a more serious brooding look. This fits the style of the image so much better. Now, if we adjust the image to widescreen, notice what happens. We get the same bug as before. The images look fine overall, but there's an obvious degradation in the rendering of the faces. I guess this is another issue we have to live with, at least for now, until it's fixed. In my effort to try and match the more serious tone of the mid-journey images, I thought it would be a good idea to give the new reference image feature a try. Firefly now gives us the ability to upload an image, and in return the engine will try to match the style. And here's where things start falling apart. On the plus side, we do get a color palette that's closer to the mid-journey image. And we also got rid of the stupid smiles, which allows us to create images with a lot more variety and subtlety. But on the other hand, <laughs> boy oh boy, the rendering of the faces is just pure insanity. We went from something that's indistinguishable from a real photo to pure nightmare fuel. So in just two steps, the AI went completely off the rails again. We basically have one to two tries before the images fall apart. I tried it one more time with another image just to see what will happen, and this time the faces render a little bit nicer, but for some reason we kinda get the same person. It looks nothing like the reference image, so I'm not really sure why Firefly converges to that specific face, but yeah, it is what it is. So that's faces. Let's now move on to the next prompt. For some reason, Firefly version 1 had a huge problem with these generic prompts. No matter what I tried, I always got back these visually uninteresting images. This prompt was meant for pattern design. I wanted to get a more decorative type of artwork that could be used in a piece of fabric or something similar. As you would expect, Midjourney absolutely nailed the task. Image after image, it kept giving me gold, but version 1 of Firefly was absolutely hideous. Now let's check version 2. Here's the set of images I got back without any setting adjustments. Firefly defaults to more realistic images, but we can easily adjust that. I love the fact though that the images are rendered correctly. They might look like a bland stock image, but at least the rendering is mostly correct. Now, here's what happens if we start adjusting things to make it look more like an artwork. This is the result of picking the art option. They're not the best looking images out there, but at least they're closer to what I'm after. This is the point where you have to play a lot with the different styles. For example, this is how things look with a painting option. Not bad, but not great either. For sure though, a thousand times better than Firefly 1. Adding the word pattern to the mix kinda gives us what we want. The images kinda look like they're tileable, but they're actually not. If we bring them into Photoshop and check the tiling, it's pretty clear that the images are not tiling correctly. We're close, but there's still work that needs to be done. Okay, now let's check our final prompt. Firefly won't really pay attention to the artist. This is by design in order to avoid copying artists' work. So I know for sure that this prompt won't give us anything close to Kandinsky. But it's still good to see how much different Firefly 2 and Firefly 1 actually are. The old version of Firefly gives us illustrations that one would typically find in stock footage sites. They're fine, but they're not something amazing. Here's now how Firefly version 2 interprets the prompt. For sure, taste is subjective, but I find these images a billion times better than anything Firefly version 1 could produce. No matter how much I adjusted the prompt, I always got something interesting back. And that's exactly what I would expect to see from an AI, a quick exploration of styles and ideas. 
something that will help us build a mood board for a project without having to spend hours upon hours digging through Pinterest and other sites. So what's the verdict? There's no doubt that Firefly version 2 is much more advanced than version 1. It can create nicely rendered images, it has the ability to imitate different styles, and we have a nice set of options to tweak the image. It's still not at Midjourney's level, but Midjourney had such a massive head start, it's not easy to catch up. Especially if we take into account the fact that Adobe is trying to build a database of images in a more ethical way. Whether it succeeds or not is a topic for another video, but for sure we can see the effect that decision has on the type of images we get out of it. Anyway. That about wraps things up for this uh, video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.